So, dear brothers uh, in Christ, uh, so since last few days uh, we have been studying about the church. So, what is the meaning of the church? We studied from the Bible, what the scripture says. So, we also saw the, the number of the people who is going to remain faithful to God until their death. And their number is 1,44,000. So, what about the people who, who actually follow Jesus but are not able to attain uh, the prize? What is going to happen to them? You see, we also saw that uh, uh, the Bible says that uh, uh, they are going to be the great multitude class uh, who are going to stand before the throne, who are not going to reign with Christ for a thousand years. Uh, but uh, they will uh, lose the opportunity to be partakers of divine nature, but yet uh, they will still uh, be of the heavenly salvation class. Uh, so, what really makes the difference between these two? Uh, today, we are going to see some of uh, the things in the scriptures. Uh, see, in the Bible, there are a lot of examples uh, to give us what actually we should do uh, to attain that uh, divine nature to be of the little flock, the one like 44,000. And one of the uh, examples that is given uh, in the Bible is that uh, Esau and Jacob. We all know Esau and Jacob, the sons of uh, Isaac. You see, Esau was the eldest son and he was supposed to receive all the birthright, the double portion of the father's property. But ultimately, Jacob got all the blessings. How if you see, Esau once was very hungry. You see, he came from hunting and uh, he could not, uh, you see, uh, wait for the food to be prepared. So, in the time when Jacob was uh, preparing uh, some meal, he requested Jacob to give the meal because he was dead tired. You see, very, very hungry. And Jacob made a deal with him. I'm going to give this meal. Only if you're going to sell me the birthright. So, yes, I carelessly sold the birthright saying, what the use of it? And he sold the birthright just because of one meal. But after selling the bright birthright, Jacob, you see, to Jacob, yes, I realized his mistake and he tried to regain that birthright. But unfortunately, you see, he could not get it. Why? Because he was very careless in the blessings which God had given him. So let us read uh, Hebrews 12, chapter 16 to 17. Uh, Stephen, brother, can you read? Oh, good evening, brother. I'll read from the screen. Hebrews 12, 16 and 17. Okay. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. One minute, sir. You come in the... Oh. No, it was okay, but then you came in the picture. Ah. Okay, I'll read one minute, sir. Ah. Hebrews 12. Ah, 16 and 17. 12, 16, 17. Yeah. Therefore, Hebrews 12, 16, 17. Yeah. See, there is that no one is sexually immoral or is godlike like Esau, who for a single meal sold his inheritance rights as the oldest son. Afterward, as you know, when he wanted to inherit this blessing, he was rejected. Even though he sought the blessing with tears, he could not change what he had done. Very good. Brother. So, even uh, he saw it with tears, he could not change what was done. So, dear brethren, we should not be careless in the blessings which uh, God has given us. The heavenly salvation is not for everybody. We have seen the subject about three ways. You see, the narrow way is only for the few people who are able to see it, identify it and consecrate their life and walk in it. So, we should not be very slack uh, concerning our heavenly promises. Uh, that is a double portion. So everybody is going to get the blessings, eternal life, but the church is promised a double. Double means what? Immortal life. Not only just eternal life, they are promised the immortal life for which Father himself is having. So we should not be careless when we seek for this blessing, sir. The little flock are ready to sacrifice and lay down anything to attain this prize. You see, Jacob, he was ready to become a pauper to attain, you see, and get this, uh, you see, uh, the birthright. So similarly, you see, this is uh, one of the difference between the little flock and the great multitude. 
You see, so Apostle Paul clearly warns us that uh, we should be very careful uh, if something bitterness, uh, you see, comes inside us, uh, like it came in Esau, uh, Hebrews 12, 15. Uh, Hebrews 12, 15, um, Emmanuel, brother, can you read Hebrews 12, 15? Hebrews 12, 15. See it through it that no one falls short of grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile, defile many. You see? Yes, sir. Yes, prove a, a small root of bitterness, sir, lest it spring from you. So be very careful. Sir. So, dear brother, another difference sir, is between uh, the king and the queen. You see, Psalms uh, 45th chapter clearly gives us a picture of a queen and a king. You see? So, there, Jesus is compared to the king, while the church is compared to a queen. Let us read Psalms 45.9. Abhishek, brother, can you read Psalms 45.9? Paishlam 45. 9. 9. King's daughters were among the among your honorable women upon your right hand did stand the queen in gold of Ophir. Very good. See, king's daughter is honorable woman. She is at the right hand and she is full with the gold of Ophir. So who is this king and who is this queen? You see, we know. You see, Jesus is the king of kings and the queen of Jesus is the little frog, the true church. Okay. And this queen is completely covered with gold of Ophir, it seems. Now, what is the meaning of gold? So, gold in the Bible represents the divine nature which God himself is having. The church will be decked. She will be granted the divine nature which God himself is having. You see, and uh, to qualify to become the queen of the king, what should a queen do? Verse 11. Abhishek, read verse 11 also. Okay. Uh, Saiji Budar, can you read Psalms 45 11? And the king will greatly desire your beauty because he is your lord. Worship him. Okay. But I read 10 also, brother. Sorry. Listen, O daughter, and consider and incline your ear. Also forget your own people and your father's house. And the king will greatly desire your beauty because he is your lord. Worship him. See, the king shall greatly desire your beauty when, when you forsake your father's house, when you forget and own people. Now, what is this forsaking uh, father's house and own people? You see, our father was father Adam. His house is his earth. One who is coming, uh, becoming the part of the heavenly salvation, he has to forget uh, coming back to this earth. Uh, he is no more in the earthly salvation. And uh, you see, his own people means the worldly people. You see, we need to forget them because we are dedicating our life to the Lord. Okay. Now, how is the uh, daughter? You see, it says the daughter is uh, glorious within. Read verse 13 also, Buddha. The king's daughter is all glorious within the palace. Her clothing is worn with gold. Very good. You see, the queen is uh, glorious within. That means her beauty of character is not one which is outwardly but uh, which uh, is uh, inward. Uh, she is glorious within means Christ is seeing the inward beauty of the church, not the outward beauty. And how she is uh, uh, decorated uh, with her uh, gold in the clothes. Uh, read Psalms 45.14. She will be brought to the king in embroidered garments. Her virgin companions who follow her will be brought to you. Yes, sir. You see, it says, she shall be brought to the king. How? In, uh, you see, embroidered garments. We all know embroidery. You see how uh, embroidery work takes place, the work of needlework. 
You see, it's not so easy. You see, you should take the needle, you should poke the cloth up and down, you see. Then only the beautiful embroidery happens. So similarly, if you need to be of the little flock, the queen class, uh, you see, we should be decorated uh, with the beautiful character of Christ. Uh, and this is not an easy process. This is a painful process. Uh, it takes a lot of efforts, a lot of pain in us to form and develop Christ likeness. Uh, you see, but that is how the king will desire our beauty. The more the decoration, the more the embroidery, that signifies you love the Lord more than everybody. And along with the queen, there are companions also, it seems. Continue, Shaji Buddha. Please continue. Um, For 15. They will be brought hmm. in with gladness and rejoicing. They will enter the king's palace. Okay. So, it says, you see, the virgins are companion, follow her, and they shall be brought, you see, into the king's palace. Now, who is the uh, virgins are companions? You see, these are the great little, little flock is the queen, but the companions, the, you see, these are the great multitude who go along with the queen to the king's palace, but they can't be of the bright class. So, this is uh, one of the difference. Uh, that means we need to remain faithful to God. You see, we need to decorate ourselves. Uh, you see, develop Christ likeness in us. Uh, you see, then only we can be of that uh, queen class. Okay. And one more difference, uh, you see, is given in the wise and the foolish virgins. Uh, you remember the parable where Jesus told about the wise and the foolish virgins, Matthew 20, chapter. You see, so let us read that one. Uh, Matthew 20, chapter 1 to 4. Uh, Emmanuel, can you read Matthew 24, sorry, 25, 1 to 4? Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 to 4. At the time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish one took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. Thank you, brother. See, they were five foolish virgins, five wise virgins. So, they were total ten virgins. Now, what is the difference between the virgins? If you see, the foolish virgin, they carried the oil only in the lamp. They did not carry it in the vessel. You see, but the wise carried the oil in the lamp as well as in the vessel. So, what happened? The bridegroom carried the seems. So, the bridegroom was supposed to come, but he came later. So, what happened? Everybody slept off, it seems. Imagine, brother, read verse 5 and verse 6. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. Mm -hmm. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. You see? So, what happened? The bridegroom actually tarried. These are all subjects. Why bridegroom tarried is given. That means he was supposed to come. He did not come. So what happened? He came late. So by the time uh, the bridegroom came, everybody slept up. In the midnight, you see, there was a cry saying, Behold the bridegroom. So immediately what happened? Uh, everybody woke up to meet the bride. Everybody began to trim the lamps. Uh, you see, but uh, you see, the wise virgins had oil. So what about uh, the foolish virgins? Uh, they did not have sufficient of oil. Therefore, they requested the wise virgins to give a little bit of oil. Read verse 8, brother. Oh. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. Hmm. Give us some of your oil. The lamps are going out. What was the reply they gave? Hmm. Continue, verse 9. No, they replied, There may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some of your some of for yourselves. You see, so we can't give it to you. If you give, it won't be sufficient for both. You please go and buy it from the market who sells it. Okay. Now, as they went to buy it, you see, the door was closed, and when they came and knocked, the door was not open, it was closed. The time was over. So, who is this virgin? If you see, it is the church. We are the virgins. 
We say we are exposed to Christ, we are engaged to Christ. The church is engaged to Christ and they have to wait till the second coming of Jesus. You see, these are the faithful virgins. Second Corinthians 11.2. Uh, uh, Vivek Shankar Vada. Can you read? Abhishek Vada, sorry. Abhishek Vada, please read. Okay. Uh, somebody else. Stephen Vada. Uh. Yeah. Yes, eleven two. Huh? Ah. Second Corinthians. Correct. Eleven two. I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. I promised you to one husband, to Christ, so that I might present you as a pure virgin to Him. See, okay. I may present you as a pure virgin to Him. The church is now engaged to Christ. When will the marriage take place? It is the second advent. Therefore, the church is waiting for the Jesus' return. The second advent. But in the meantime, they have got oil in the lamp. Now, what is the meaning of the lamp? You see, for the Bible, Bible is a dictionary. We study how to study the Bible in our first class. How to understand the Bible? You see, for each and every, this one, Bible as its own dictionary. So, the lamp in the Bible means God's words. Psalm 195. It says, no, the word is a lamp unto my feet, uh, you see, and uh, light unto my path. Uh. So, it's the word of God. Uh. See, the, the oil is there in the, you see, word of God. That means oil means what? Uh, Holy Spirit. Uh. In olden days, they used to use the oil, olive oil, anointing oil to anoint the priest and the king. So oil in the Bible represents the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is there in the Bible, no doubt at all. Everybody has got the Bible, it is there in the Holy Spirit. But that Holy Spirit, it should be where? Not only in the Bible, it should also be in the vessel. Now, who is the vessel? Dear brethren, we are the vessel. You see, the Holy Spirit should be within us. You see, it's not sufficient that it is there in the Bible, but it should be within us. Uh, the spirit of consecration, the spirit of the Lord, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so the foolish virgins, uh, they did not develop these fruits of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of Christ's likeness in them. So when Christ came to pick them, you see, they were not prepared. Uh, you see, therefore, they were told to go to the world and get their own oil. So world, why? Because that is the place where the oil is sold. So it means, who is the owner of the Holy Spirit? If you see, it is our God. Our God sells the Holy Spirit. That means he doesn't give it freely. It should cost us something. If he sacrifices only, if he dedicate and if he sacrifice, if he give out something from us, then only God gives us uh, this Holy Spirit. Uh, or else uh, God doesn't give the Holy Spirit to uh, Therefore, the seller is God. So you need to you need to make a lot of sacrifices. You a spend, not amount, but offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Generally, God will fill us with the Holy Spirit. So by the time the great body will go to the world and develop that spirit of consecration and Christ-likeness and return, the door will be closed. Hence, they can't be of the little flock. Okay, this is one of the difference. And one more difference is given to us in Gideon. You see, we all know the story of Gideon. In childhood, we would have listened in so many Sunday class in the churches and all. Judges 7 chapter. You see, we can read after the class is over. There, the Midianites came to attack Israel. Then the people of Israel cried to the Lord. Then God told, okay, call the children of Israel so, so they may go and fight against the Midianites. You see, one lakh twenty thousand. You see, uh, Midianites had come to fight against uh, Israel. So when Gideon called, you see what happened? A large group of people came. You see, thirty-two thousand people came. But uh, when God saw the crowd, God told, "Oh, this is very huge. This is very large number." Huh? If I give victory from this last number, the people will tell it is because of the strength. Therefore, God told to Gideon, give a shout. 
whoever is fearful you see whoever doesn't want to come have a, you see uh, love and affection on the family and the house or who was fear of the war they can return back immediately what happened 22000 people went away so let us read judges 7 chapter second verse uh, sajibudar can you read Uh, and the Lord said to Gideon, "The people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. If I did, Israel would boast against me, saying, 'My own hand has saved me.'" Okay, continue. Uh, verse three also, brother. Now, therefore, make an announcement in the hearing of of the people. and say who are who are is trembling and afraid let him go back and leave early from mount gilead and 22000 of the people went back leaving 10000 believing 10000 that means 32000 people had come big crowd had come But once ha uh, uh, you see gideon told who are is fear uh, full of about the war they can return home to their uh, Four houses. Immediately, twenty-two thousand people went away. Only ten thousand people were left away. Now, God tells, even this ten thousand is too much. Now, bring them to the water. I will test them. You see, and I will tell who is going to go for the war. Who is not going to go for the war? So Gideon calls everybody to the water and tells them to drink the water. Now, their water pans. Read verse five and verse six, brother. So he brought the people down to the water, and the Lord said to Gideon, "Everyone who laps the water with his tongue, like a dog laps, set him apart by himself. Likewise, everyone who kneel down to drink." And the number of those who laped, putting their hand to their mouth, was three hundred men. But all the rest of the people knelt down to drink water. You see, so there God tests the people. Those who licked the water by putting them out directly to the water, they were nine thousand seven hundred. So God told you reject them, but the three hundred people who took the water in their hand, you see, and drank it, they were only three hundred. They were selected. Dear brethren, so what does it mean? You see, so only through the three hundred people, God gave the victory. How did God give the victory? no sword was used no spears were used no bow and arrow were used but they were told to just carry three things one a trumpet blow the trumpet other you see a lamp hidden in a you see mud pitcher read verse 20 stephen brother can you read verse 20 the three companies blew the trumpets and smashed the jars grasping the torches in their left hands and holding in their right hands the trumpets they were to blow they shouted a sword for the lord and for gideon very good so they held these three things broke the mud pitcher let the light shine and blow the trumpet and shouted loudly the sword of the lord and of gideon so by that time they shouted and went down the war was over so what is the meaning of this one see as gideon had a fight with the midianites the enemies of israel so similarly we have warfare with our enemies so who is our enemy nobody in this world not flesh and blood but our warfare is against the spiritual wickedness uh, you see in the spiritual uh, you see sky that means the wicked uh, rulers of this earth uh, that is the satan and the fallen angels now now to fight them to fight our enemies who are invisible now what we should do what did jesus say if somebody wants to make disciple what did jesus say what is the condition of discipleship what did jesus say deny yourself follow me take up the cross yes deny yourself uh, carry the cross 
and follow me. That is the condition. So as soon as this call was given, you see, dear brethren, you see, what happened? How many people came in Simsa? You see, 30, huh? 2,000 people came, uh, you see, not one or two, you see, very good crowd of 32,000 people came uh, who were ready for uh, fighting, uh, you see, but uh, when uh, God told, no, no, uh, whoever is frightened uh, to come for the war, they can return, you see, what happened? Uh, 10,000 uh, people only remained, 22,000 left away, it seems, uh, so, only 22,000 were went away. Only let just 10,000. What does it mean? What did Jesus say? Many are called, few are chosen. Read Matthew 22, 14. Emmanuel, brother, can you read Matthew 22, 14? Matthew 22, 14. Matthew chapter 22, verse 14. For many are invited, but few are chosen. Many are invited, but few are chosen. Many are invited. 30,000 people are invited. But in that one, only 10,000 people were chosen. 22,000 who had fear to stand for the Lord and fight for his cause, they returned back home. You see? So, who all went back? That means they are the good believers. They are not the followers of Christ. They don't want to follow Christ. They want to be good believing Christians, believe in Lord Jesus Christ. That's all. They don't want to offer themselves to the Lord. They want only blessings and uh, you see. <coughs> Miracles from the Lord. Uh. So once when Lord told you can go back, they went back into the world. That means they'll be in the Lord. They'll be in the world as a very neutral people. Uh. And uh, what did God say? This crowd, the balanced crowd is also too much. Bring him to the water. I'll test him in the water. Now what is the meaning of water in the Bible? Water in the Bible means God's words, the Bible. Read Habakkuk 2.14. Habakkuk 2.14. Sai Jibudar, can you read Habakkuk 2.14? Habakkuk 2.14. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. As the waters covers the sea, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord shall fill the whole earth. That means God's words are water. The people are brought to the truth. They are tested there. You see what happened there? How people receive the truth? Some people, you see, they are not interested at all. Simply they listen. They put their head down, immerse completely in water. They just drank it only for satisfaction. Nothing else. These are the Christians who are not interested in the Bible. They just attend, you see, just attend some classes only for what? Only for satisfaction, but not really interested in the Lord. They are not interested. You see, they are really, the really God's children are who? The 300. They filter, you see, the dust and everything in the water. You see, they cleanly check the word of God. They steady. They're very alert, very attentive, you see, and listen and make notes, uh, you see, and take questions, uh, understand each and everything. Uh, they drink the water, they assimilate, they digest the truth, uh, they understand uh, what is being taught to them. That is uh, the character of a Christian. Therefore, you know, the people of Israel like this only, like 9,700, uh, they just listen, they did not put anything into practice. Uh. So what does the Bible say about them? Uh? Read Romans 10, chapter 2 and 3. Evangel Buddha, can you read Romans 10, chapter 2 and 3? Romans chapter 10, verse 2 and 3. For I can testify about them that they are zealous of God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. Since they did not know the righteousness of God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. Oh. Apostle Paul gives a record, they have zeal, but not according to knowledge. If they don't have knowledge, if they have zeal, energy, they do whatever they want to please the Lord. Is the Lord pleased? No. God rejected Israel. Similarly, 9,700 were rejected. Similarly, the great multitude, they don't have an interest in the Bible. They are rejected. You see, therefore, Apostle Paul tells, steady to show thyself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. So, 
with this 300 people only, God get the victory. How? There are only three things. Once a trumpet, a earthen vessel, inside which there is a lamp. What is this earthen vessel? This is the old nature. Inside which uh, there is the lamp, the lamp of the Holy Spirit. What did Apostle Paul say? Don't quench the spirit. Uh, don't grieve the spirit. Uh, be filled with the spirit. Uh, that means the Holy Spirit is there within this old nature. You see, we need to break this old nature so that the Holy Spirit shines brightly. Read 2 Corinthians 4 7. Stephen, brother, read 2 Corinthians 4 7. Second Corinthians 4, hmm. 7. Hmm. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Okay, we have this treasure and the Holy Spirit in this earthen vessel. So it may be of God. You see, and they were told to blow the trumpet. You see, they have to break this earthen vessel, then the Holy Spirit will shine. What did Jesus say? Your character should shine as a light so they may appreciate God. Brother, read Matthew 5.16. Okay, Abhishek brother is there. Abhishek brother, can you read Matthew 5.16? Do you have network? Okay, somebody else who can read Matthew 5.16. Let your light, let, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Okay. That they may see your good works and glorify God which is in heaven. Let your light shine. If your light has to shine, this old nature, the old man's character has to be destroyed. Then only it will shine. Okay. Now, trumpet. The trumpet has to be blown. What is the meaning of trumpet? Proclamation of the truth. It is not sufficient that we develop Christ likeness. We let our light to shine. But we need to witness this truth. Imagine, you have been hearing this truth for so many months. You see, is this truth useful or not? <coughs> Are the classes useful or not? You Definitely, sir. Definitely, brother. Definitely. Yes. But uh, what about the subjects? Is the subjects really effective? Is it really bringing some usefulness or development in you, everybody? Of course, as and yes, when the yes. word touches us, we are changed. Yes. It uh, soaks inside us, yes. transforms us in one sense. Is there a difference between the teachings of what we take here and other churches? There is a very big difference in the interpretation of scripture here. Yes. Then, are we witnessing this truth to others? Are we proclaiming yes. this truth? Are we blowing this trumpet up? That is definitely. the war of Kidian. Correct. Definitely we need to do. Yes. So, it is not only crushing of the old nature. It is not only letting now good characters show, but the proclamation and witnessing of the truth. How many Christians we meet in our path? Are we witnessing about God's kingdom to them? Are we witnessing that about thousand years Christ stream that everybody will come back in this earth and uh, live a life in this earth? Are we witnessing that this is the only little flock who goes to heaven? There are two salvation, heavenly and earthly salvation, dear brethren. We need to do it. This is the difference between the little flock and the great flock. It is only through these people who are able to destroy completely the enemies. And there is no need for them to do anything. There is no need for them to fight. God will fight them for them. See, Midianites, uh, Israel people did not fight the Midianites. Uh, they just did these things automatically God defeated them. So similarly, God will defeat all our enemies, sir, especially the fallen angels and the Satan. You see, so this is the difference between the great multitude and the little flock. Dear brethren, so let us all pray to God that we may remain faithful to God in the coming days and be of the little flock. Okay. If anybody has got any questions, any doubts, they can ask. Anybody, any questions, any doubts? Thank you, brother. Okay. Any doubts, Stephen, brother? I hope this is the final or the, la or the one more episode to go on the church. Uh, church, this is the final episode. Okay, thank you.
Thank you. Okay. Shaiji brother, any questions? No, brother. Emmanuel brother? No questions, brother. Okay. Abhishek brother? No question. Okay. Uh, I hope all of you are following the PDF.